Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General, thank you for uh, your testimony and thank you for coming by to, to see uh, many of us before the testimony. I want to ask you about the National Commission on the Future of the Army, which was established by the National Defense Authorization Act of, of uh, 2015 and the Army's Aviation Restructure Initiative, or ARI. Uh, the National Commission's mandate is to evaluate future missions, evaluate the force mix of the total Army, and evaluate whether combat aviation assets from the Army National Guard should be transferred to the Army. I understand from sources within the Pentagon that the Army intends to implement certain elements of the Army's ARI as early as October 1st of this year. Um, as I expressed to you, making these irreversible force structure changes to the Guard before we've had a chance to see what the Commission has to say about ARI uh, would not be advisable and does not make sense to me. The intent of Congress was clear. There should be no transfers of helicopters away from the Guard until Congress receives and reviews the findings of the Army Commission. As such, I'd like to know your opinion of the ARI plan, which would remove all combat aviation from the Army National Guard. Do you support halting transfers of helicopters away from the Guard until the Army Commission reports back in February of next year? Thanks, Senator. It's my understanding that transfer by October is in accordance with last year's uh, 15 uh, NDAA and the 16 NDAA, and the one that's under uh, debate right now is the one that's talking about halting them. So the Army is actually executing their last written order, which was last year's uh, uh, authorization, as I understand it. I'll look into that, though. As far as do I support it or not, uh, this puts and takes to this ARI thing. Uh, I think the National Guard has some good points. The National Guard makes some points that uh, they're concerned that it's a slippery slope, we're going to take combat capabilities away from them, and they won't be able to uh, be the strategic and operational uh, reserve. Uh, fair enough. Uh, but there's also key points on the Army side. One, fiscal. Uh, there's a billion dollar a year savings and $12 billion over time. I think that's not insignificant given the current crunch uh, with sequester, et cetera. Uh, and, and most importantly, I think, is a readiness issue. Uh, if we do not execute this ARI, then I think uh, three of the divisions, uh, the 1st Infantry Division, the 10th Mountain Division, 25th Division in Hawaii, are not going to have armed reconnaissance capability. We're going to blind uh, three out of the 10 active duty division commanders uh, with inability to be able to see a battlefield if they were thereby committed. Uh, so on balance, uh, I would favor the transfer. However, uh, I'm going to wait the results of the commission, and I'm going to pay attention to their recommendations very closely, and I'll remain continually engaged with the uh, with the Guard uh, and try to do the right thing for the total Army. Well, I'm glad to know you're going to await the, the finding of the Commission. And, and I would just say to you uh, a couple of things. From my conversations with many of our people in the Guard, they believe that for many of the states, such as Mississippi, uh, our program would be set back for a decade. Uh, it would take us 10 years to get over the loss of, uh, of these Apaches and, um, and I, I think would do great, great harm to, to what we've had over the past, and that is that the active Army and the National Guard units have operated seamlessly uh, as one team since 9-11, and, uh, and it's, been, uh, it's been good for the country. I think it's unfortunate that policy fights and distrust between the Guard and Active Army have become uh, prevalent over the, the past five years. What's your assessment of the current relationship between the Army and the Army National Guard? And uh, I, w will you acknowledge that, that the, um, the, the relationship has deteriorated uh, to, to a point where uh, actually it's unseemly? Well, Senator, the, uh, as the Commander of Forces Command, I deal with the National Guard and uh, United States Army Reserve uh, on a frequent basis. Uh, so I'm coming at this from an operational force point of view, from a fielded forces. Uh, I do not see that friction in the fielded forces. Uh, we train together, we operate together, we have partnerships together, uh, and I have commanded National Guard forces in both Iraq and Afghanistan. You don't see that in the field? 
I don't see that in the field. That's correct. I do you not see, see that in, tension. You see it here in this city, do you not? Well, I don't. So maybe some things happen when people come to D.C. I don't know, but uh, perhaps there's a uh, there's tension. I, I've heard that. <laughs> uh, the, as, as I understand, there's tension uh, here uh, uh, among some of the senior leaders. Uh, I'll work to I'll work uh, along with uh, uh, General Grass and uh, General Cadavy to to work in, to patch up whatever uh, issues there are. Uh, from a personal perspective, I think there's one army. That's it. There's one army. Uh, we all wear the same uniform, and it says United States Army on our chest, and that's the way we have to approach it. Uh, the United States Army cannot conduct combat operations in a sustained way overseas without the use of the National Guard and the Reserve. We just can't do it. We can do short-term operations, but sustained ops cannot be done without the Guard and the Reserve. It's one army. They're critical to our success. Well, thank you very much for that. This, uh, this conversation will continue. Uh, we had it uh, privately in my office. Uh, we're, we're discussing it publicly today, and, and I think uh, I, th I think we can acknowledge that the National Guard is, is a very integral part of what your mission will be, and I, I hope these issues can be resolved in, in a, a mutually satisfactory manner. Thank you very much for your service. Thanks, sir.